In the small town of Cheselwick, there are seven bus routes, but only one tram. A museum which exhibits a dinosaur skeleton. A castle ruin with a beautiful view, but without a ghost. To make up for that, though, there's a biscuit factory with a factory outlet. At the very edge of town, where you can already see the fields and hear the railway crossing gate, Fennel Venel is situated. Number 19 is owned by Mr. Clever, but he doesn't live there. This is where people like Ernest Ernest live, the arts teacher, who's in love with the postwoman, and a nosy widow called Mrs. Pondicherry, and Janitor Woods, who's also the coach of the water polo team. But this isn't everything going on at Fennel Venel number 19. As usual, the children are playing in the courtyard. Everything's going as usual. Everything is nice. No thought that something extraordinary might happen. Oh? A shoe, Marvel. says Tomek. How did that get here? Well, he says, someone has certainly lost it. Someone with very large feet, observes Pippa. Tanya and Tonya say, the person whom this shoe fits, he will be the king, just like in the story of Cinderella. Once upon a time, there was a prince, and he was looking for a girl. He didn't know what the girl looked like, but he had one of her shoes. So he went out and searched for the girl whose foot fit in the shoe. This would mean she was the right girl. He found the right girl, they were married, the girl became queen, and the other girls didn't. Tomek says, but this is a man's shoe. True. That means that they'll be searching for a king and not a queen. So who is the new king? Asked Tanya and Tonya. Willie? Sergei? Alexei? Andre? Tomek? Ah, Tomek is the new king. Tomek can't believe it. Pippa says quietly, as the new king, you must make a speech now. Ah, that's something King Tomek hadn't thought of. Tomek says, my first decree, uh, holidays for everyone. School is called off. Holidays for everyone. This will be great. Why aren't you too happy? Asks Tomek. Because on our holidays we always fly to the beach, say Tanya and Tonya. Yes, and? Our parents have to go to work. They won't have time to go. But this gives King Tomek another idea. King Tomek declares, from today on, no one has to work. a good idea. But Pippa wonders, but then no one earns money to buy things. King Tomek hadn't considered that. Then I will simply outlaw money. No one has to pay for things anymore. Everything is free of charge. What a brilliant king. Everything is free. Super. Willie thinks, when no one works anymore, then there won't be any new biscuits made. Then there won't be new clothes. Then there won't be anything new anymore. Tomek says that it shouldn't be like that, and that he'll have to think it over. And he always thinks best when he's in the bathtub. And even better when there's music. And even better with bubbles in the bath. 
And then he will need his rubber ducky. And an umbrella. And an order of large fries with ketchup and mayo. And... That's enough, interrupts Will. Right, say Tanya and Tonya. Pippa asks if an idea has come to Tomic yet. We've served you from start to finish, and nothing has come to you? Some king. Willie chants, no more king. Willie's right. Why do they need a king? Tomic never wanted to be the king. To be the king is a royal pain. He's always to blame. And all of this because a shoe fell out of the sky. Dumb shoe. Oh. There's Mr. Ernest Ernest from the top floor apartment. Is that your shoe? asks Tomek. Why, yes it is, says Mr. Ernest Ernest. And also that he'd been searching a while for it. Whoever fits this shoe, he will be the king, say Tanya and Tonya. Mr. Ernest Ernest says, Oh, then I must find a kingdom to rule. Perhaps you're all interested? No more king! No more king! They all chant. Oh, well, says Mr. Ernest Ernest, I'll stay the art teacher then. And the crowd is happy again. Uh, despite that, can I have my shoe back? Asks Mr. Ernest Ernest. Of course, says Willie, and Tomek adds, Whoever fits in this shoe is the art teacher. Thank you.